What did I say? After last week, I knew the cards were gonna come flowing, and man, did they come. There were a total of 17 new cards revealed just this week alone, so I don't wanna waste any more time. Let's get into them. Lilo Making a Wish was revealed on Sunday, July 9th, which was a really big surprise because we haven't normally gotten reveals on the weekend. Lilo Making a Wish is an amber, uninkable one cost with one strength, one willpower, and two lore. She's a rare vanilla card with the trait Storyborn and Hero. Lilo is essentially Amber's version of Maleficent biding her time, and is a great addition to an amber aggro package especially since you can play Lilo turn one and then Simba protective cub which we saw in the last video on turn two which pretty much guarantees you being able to quest with Lilo a second time on turn three. Lilo being in the same color as Simba is also nice because it can potentially delay how soon you have to show your opponent what your second ink color is for your deck. Lilo also fits very well into the stitch rockstar package which I just like because it's thematic. On July 10th both Flotsam and Jetsam Ursula's spy got revealed in the Disney Lorcana HQ discord. If if you're not in there, it's the place to be for Lorcana, trust me. I'll put a link in the description, so look down there to find it. Flotsam is an Amethyst Uninkable 5 cost with 3 strength, 4 willpower, and 2 lore. He's a rare card with the traits Storyborn and Ally, and the keyword Rush, which means he can challenge the turn he's played. He also has the ability Dexterous Lunge, which says your character's name Jetsam gain Rush. And we have Jetsam, who's an Amethyst Inkable 4 cost with 3 strength, 3 willpower, and 1 lore. He's a common card with the traits Storyborn and Ally, and the keyword Evasive, which means only other evasives can challenge this character. Jetsam also has the ability Sinister Slither, which says your character's name Flotsam gain evasive. This is obviously a tag team duo, and I love it. I find it interesting the Rush keyword seems to be valued more than evasive due to the increased ink cost and loss of ink ability because so far evasive has seemed like a pretty strong keyword since you pretty much lose unless you have a way to interact or remove evasive characters. Although this looks like a pretty fun combo, I'm having trouble seeing the value in running it because it's usually better to run something that works by itself rather than running something that requires multiple pieces unless the combination is really good like Mickey and Brooms. Flotsam and Jetsam are fun together but in the end you get two evasives with Rush and I can see where that's useful against evasives but otherwise you're doing a lot just to threaten three lore across two cards. On July 11th Disney Lorcana released two more cards in the Disney Lorcana HQ Discord and one of them is unbelievable but we'll get to that one in a second. The first one revealed was Triton the Sea King which is a sapphire inkable seven cost with five strength, nine willpower, and two lore. He's an uncommon vanilla card with the traits Storyborn and King. Triton looks like a great top end, especially for Sapphire, because Sapphire can ramp up to this card relatively quickly, and Triton is going to be good at both questing and challenging. The two lore on him makes him a solid quester, and his giant butt with nine willpower makes it so that he's almost always trading into at least two things. Y'all remember how in the last video I said that Tinkerbell Giant Fury was going to really hurt cheap aggro decks because of her ability that deals one damage to all opposing characters when she's played? Yeah, well Grab Your Sword is even worse for them. Grab Your Sword is a steel, uninkable, five cost song card, which means a character that costs five ink or more can exert to sing this song for free. When this song is played, you deal two damage to each opposing character. This means that now, you can play Tinkerbell Tiny Tactician on turn three, shift Tinkerbell Giant Fairy on top of Tinkerbell Tiny Tactician on turn four, which will deal one damage to all opposing characters, then use Tinkerbell Giant Fairy to sing Grab Your Sword and deal two more damage to all opposing characters on the same turn. Yeah. Poor Rockstar Stitch just lost all of his fans in a massacre, and there's nothing you can do about it because Ward doesn't even prevent this from happening. Overall, Grab Your Sword is a phenomenal card. Even as an uninkable card, this feels super strong and is one of the first cards I've really felt is just an auto-include in most every steel deck. I'll be very eager to see if any aggro decks really make it far at all when the full set releases, just knowing that this card exists. On July 13th, Anna, heir to Arendelle, was revealed in a post on Twitter by Disney Lorcana featuring herself and Elsa. Anna is an Amethyst Inkable 4 cost with 2 strength, 4 willpower, and 2 lore. She's an uncommon card with the traits Storyborn, Hero, and Queen, and the ability Loving Heart, which says when you play this character, if you have a character named Elsa in play, choose an opposing character. The chosen character doesn't ready at the start of their next turn. Anna is a perfect turn 4 card to play right after Elsa Snow Queen, because Elsa can exert an opposing character on turn 4, and then you can play Anna and stun them by keeping them from readying. Anna's stats alone aren't quite valuable enough for 4 
for Ink, meaning in order for her to get better, you have to see Elsa, and with one Elsa revealed so far, that might be enough, but we can pretty confidently say we'll see at least three Elsas in set one. We see a different Elsa art on one of the card sleeves that have been revealed, and another Elsa named Elsa Queen Regent was referenced on the quick start rules. Maybe after we see all three of these Elsas, we'll see a Frozen deck pop up that you'll be able to play that Anna fits right into. Team Lorcana also decided to reveal Ariel Spectacular Singer in the Disney Lorcana HQ Discord on July 13th. Ariel is an amber inkable three cost with two strength, three willpower, and one lore. She's a super rare card with the trait Storyborn Hero and Princess and has a brand new keyword called Singer, which allows the character with that keyword to sing songs up to the ink cost of the number that comes after the keyword. So Ariel can sing songs up to five ink, even though she's only three ink. She also has the ability Musical Debut, which says when you play this character, look at the top four cards of your deck. You may reveal a song card and put it into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. I'm sure you've noticed the theme here. Ariel is all about songs. I love this new keyword, and overall, I think Ariel looks pretty good and will only get better with the more songs we see. She's essentially letting you play your four and five cost songs for a discount after waiting at least one turn, but she's especially good because she lets you dig for those song cards like Let It Go or Grab Your Sword that you might need in order to answer some threats on board. Not to mention, she's also a princess, which means with Moana, you could sing or quest Ariel, then ready her up again and do something else. This makes me think there's a five cost Amber card incoming that we haven't seen yet, so I'll be on the lookout for that. We thought that would be all of the cards revealed for that day, but then Team Lorcana surprised us once again and decided to show off Gaston, Arrogant Hunter, really late in the Lorcana HQ Discord. Gaston is a ruby inkable two cost card with four strength, two willpower, and zero lore? He's a common card with the trait Storyborn and Villain and has the keyword Reckless, which means that character must challenge if able by the end of the turn and cannot quest. This is the first card we've seen both with zero lore and with the Reckless keyword on themselves. I think Gaston is such an interesting card, but overall underwhelming. Because Gaston cannot quest, he cannot progress your win condition. Therefore, he's more like a removal piece. He's a two cost, deal four damage to something, except you don't get to decide when you deal the four damage, your opponent does, and your opponent decides what they want to allow you to target with Gaston. He reminds me a lot of Scar Fiery Usuper in that his primary goal is probably to take something out. Now that we have Gaston, LeFou can finally use his ability which lets you play LeFou for one less ink when there's Gaston in play. Nothing crazy if I'm honest, but it's there. At first glance, Gaston is not looking all that great of a card, but time will tell and I'm sure we have other Gastons on the way that we've yet to see. On July 14th, our German friends Whippet and Rafa, who help with Lorcania.com, run the Lorcana Germany Twitter account and have their own German podcast where they talk about Lorcana, were able to reveal to us in a video Sebastian Court Composer. Sebastian is an amber inkable two cost with two strength, two willpower, and one lore. He's a common card with the traits Storyborn and Ally and has the keyword Singer 4. Now we're really starting to see another amber identity shine through, which is Songs, since both Ariel and Sebastian have this Singer keyword. Overall, Sebastian isn't the best two drop, especially in Amber, but in a Songs deck, he would be very good value being able to sing four cost songs. Kind of like I mentioned with Ariel, Sebastian will get better the more songs we see, especially in Amber. The question will be whether the songs will be good enough for a Songs deck to hold its own against other decks. On July 15th, Team Lorcana dropped four new cards in the Lorcana HQ Discord again, starting with Ursula's Shell Necklace. This card is a three cost Amber uninkable item card with the ability Now Sing that says whenever you play a song, you may pay one ink to draw a card. This item provides so much value. I think it's important to point out that the text reads play a song and not sing a song. This item just lets you cycle song cards from your hand, and if you're singing them for free, then I don't mind paying one ink just to draw a card because I'm already saving ink for the turn by singing. Not to mention if you have multiple of these out on the table, you're drawing even more cards. If there's a viable song stack, this is definitely a great draw engine for it. The next card revealed is a ruby inkable one cost card called Fan the Flames. It's an action card that says ready chosen character. They can't quest for the rest of this turn. This looks like a super solid card that has a lot of possibilities. Being able to ready a character potentially keeps it safe for a turn, but you can also do some really nasty things with cards like Aladdin Heroic Outlaw and Mulan Imperial Soldier because their abilities get better the more you're able to challenge and banish. If you can challenge and banish a character with Aladdin, ready him, then challenge and banish another character, that's an 8 lore swing in one turn. With Mulan, you can give every character on your side of the board 2 lore for the turn. You can also do things like ready Moana in the princess deck so that she isn't left vulnerable after using her ability. I'm very eager to see how this card ends up getting used and what crazy things people come up with. After that, we saw If It's Not Baroque, 
Rote, which is a sapphire inkable three cost action card that says return an item card from your discard to your hand. This is certainly a decent card to get back those items that might be banished by Beast, but so far we haven't seen any items that I think would warrant wanting to run an uninkable card like this. We know if it's uninkable, it's supposed to be pretty strong in some capacity, so maybe there are some pieces to this puzzle we're missing. Lastly, we were shown Break, which is a steel inkable two cost action card that says banish chosen item. This is exactly what we see from Beast Hardheaded's ability, but on an action card, and it definitely serves a purpose. We haven't seen all that many item cards, and the more we see, the better this card gets, especially if some of these item cards are staples in good decks. It's definitely a card you would consider slotting into steel decks if items are running rampant. Then, to end off the week, our German friends Artem from Lorcania, Whippet, and Rafa were all invited to an invite-only Lorcana pre-launch event in Berlin, where only 100 people were invited. Some of the stuff they were shown, they had to sign an NDA for and can't release until July 25th, but they were able to share a few things before then. It looks like they were addressed by Shane Hartley, who's the creative director at Ravensburger, as well as Ryan Miller and Steve Warner, the two co-designers for Lorcana. Shane shared that there is both a hidden Mickey and a hidden Ravensburger logo that were incorporated into the design on the back of the Lorcana cards, which really goes to show the detail in which all of this has been designed. They also got to see a bunch of alternate initial ink symbol designs, and I love this picture. It just goes to show how many times they went through and changed stuff, and makes me want to know all the ins and outs of how Lorcana was designed. The dream would be for there to be a documentary about all of this one day on Disney Plus or something similar, because it would be fascinating. They were also shown some drafts of the Great Illuminary, which is where all of the glimmers in Lorcana are summoned, as well as the Star Catcher. Peter Brockhammer, who is one of the many amazing Lorcana artists revealed, also came out to talk to everyone and shared some new cards. The first card we saw was Aladdin Street Rat. Aladdin is a ruby inkable three cost with two strength, two willpower, and one lore. He's a common card with the trait Storyboard and Hero, and it has the ability Improvise, which says when you play this character, all opponents lose one lore. I'm very excited to see both an Aladdin that Aladdin Heroic Outlaw can shift onto in the same ink, and another character that aligns with one of Ruby's themes being lore manipulation. We already got Rapunzel, who takes one lore from all opponents when played, and Aladdin Heroic Outlaw, which steals two lore from all opponents when he banishes a character in a challenge. For decks centered around this theme, Aladdin will be an instant addition. Next, we were shown this absolutely beautiful Maleficent Not Invited. Maleficent is a sapphire inkable five cost with three strength, six willpower, and three lore. She's a rare vanilla card with the traits Dreamborn, Villain, and Sorcerer. This has to be one of my top 10, maybe even top five overall cards right now. The art is just phenomenal, and she's just a really solid card. Because of the addition of the lore stat on cards in Lorcana compared to cards in most other card games, you really can't sleep on high lore, high willpower vanilla cards like this. In Sapphire, where you have a bunch of ramp, you can easily get this card out on turn four, and being able to quest for three lore every turn adds up fast. Because of Maleficent's willpower, your opponent is likely going to have to use more than one character or a removal spell just to get rid of her, and every turn they don't, you're probably gaining another three lore. Between the art and the stats, this card is definitely on my list of favorites. After Maleficent, we saw Prince Philip Dragon Slayer, who's an amber, uninkable, four cost with three strength, three willpower, and two lore. He's an uncommon card with the traits Storyborn Hero and Prince, and the ability Heroism, which says if this character challenges another character and gets banished in the challenge, you may banish the challenged character. This is kind of like a version of Death Touch or Poison from other games, but instead of just damaging the opponent, Prince Philip has to actually be banished. Because of the themes we've seen in Amber so far, I wouldn't be surprised if this is the extent of removal we see in that ink. Prince Philip has a lot of potential to trade up since a lot of the higher cost of characters have at least three strength, and Prince Philip is pretty much a direct counter to any bodyguard decks people were eager to build. We'll have to see if he's fast enough to be a good removal option or if he gets removed too quickly slash easily to be effective. Finally, we were shown Musketeer Tabard, which is a steel uninkable four cost item, which has the ability all for one and one for all, which says every time one of your characters with bodyguard gets banished, you may draw a card. This is a really great item for bodyguards because bodyguards entire purpose is to essentially block characters and get banished. So this card is just letting you draw cards for what bodyguards are already doing naturally. The real question is whether this card is more consistent than running something like Beast Mirror for a draw card and steal. We'll have to wait and see. Phew! That's finally everything that's happened this past week regarding Lorcana. Like I said last week, reveals are really ramping up and we still have so many cards that haven't been revealed. It's only about two and a half weeks until Gen Con, which I'll be at and I'll be covering everything going down with Lorcana there. Be on the lookout for videos and tweets from me because I have a really exciting challenge slash video planned for Gen Con and it's gonna require your help. 
I'll give more information about that as we get closer to Gen Con. And before that, we know there are different media outlets that are waiting until the week of July 24th to start flooding our feeds with Lorcana. Be sure to check out all the amazing people and links in the description. If you want to see any of the photos or anything talked about in this video, it'll be down there. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it and let me know what you'd like to see from me at Gen Con down in the comments. If you don't want to miss any info, be sure to subscribe and follow me on Twitter. Be sure to check out Lorcania.com and join the Disney Lorcana HQ Discord as well. There's a lot happening there. Most importantly, be sure to take care of yourselves. My name is Brandon, also known as B Squared. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.